Hey guys, Creative the Lazy Geek here, and today we're going to talk about a method of uh, doing balance adjustments, the balancing of your telescope, so that the counterweights on one side uh, have the same uh, moment arm force applied to the RA axis as the telescope on the other side, or when you're looking at the declination axis, um, the front of the telescope and the back of the telescope should be well uh, balanced, right? This is so that you avoid stress on the motors. And traditionally, the way to do that is simply to release uh, the clutch on the mount and see like, okay, where is it like heavier? And for the moment, I have intentionally unbalanced uh, the telescope, uh, just so you can see how that affects the motors, because um, there are many cases where it's difficult to do this balancing if the mount is a little bit stiff. Um, and you know, you're, you're trying to balance, but it's not like moving so freely. So you don't know what to do. How do I balance properly when the mount doesn't let me balance properly? It's not so much the case with this mount, but there are quite a few mounts where it can be an issue. And there is a way to do that. And this is thanks to one of uh, the comments. Uh, so thank you so much, Mehdi, for suggesting that using a contactless less, uh, clamp AC, DC uh, clamp meter. So the principle is you'd put a cable in the center like that and using a hole sensor or something like that, whatever, uh, using magic, <laughs> it will measure the uh, amperage that is being pulled by the motors and you can uh, then do a method where you know you can try to move the motors around while moving the weights up and down the counterweight shaft and you see at what position do the weights generate the least uh, consumption electricity or uh, sorry not electricity but uh, amperage intensity is that intensity in english the amperage i'll call it the amperage um, consumption from the motor now uh, and once you've found the minimum you know that you're in balance because this is where uh, the motors need the least energy to actually turn uh, the mount another way to do it and this is in the end probably what i prefer maybe it's not ideal but it seems to work pretty well is i am at near um, horizontal uh, and then from the point of near horizontal and maybe slightly like slanted towards the side that i'm going to test I'm going to make the motor actually like rotate and then I will measure how much energy, how much amp amps it pulled. And then I'll do exactly the same thing for the opposite side. And I will know that I am in a good position when I get both uh, sides consumption, power consumption or amps uh, being pulled, having the same value. And so we're going to use that. And on here, on this particular uh, thing that cost me something like 30 bucks, and it's good because I needed a multimeter anyway, it has multimeter functions as well. I can set this to 60 amps, so it can measure anything up to 60 amps. It has some um, backlighting, which is, uh, which is nice. And what I did as well is the cable of my mount, the power cable of my mount, which is DC, um, has I split it into two because if you measure everything at once, one side will be positive, the other negative, and it will just cancel them each other out. So you have to actually put a cable like that in the uh, in the center and measure uh, how much how much the uh, it is pulling. So now, if I take my uh, controller here. And let's say I will start with the counterweight shaft a bit uh, downwards. So let's try this. No, <laughs> wrong axis. This is not starting well. So counterweight shaft is a bit slanted downwards. And I'm going to have a look and maybe you'll see, maybe you won't. Ideally, we want to keep this wire in the middle. It can be a bit difficult, especially when you're trying to take a movie and you're sitting down to be in the frame, but you know, uh, you can achieve better than I can. Uh, like this might work pretty well. And I am going to make uh, the mounts try to raise the counterweights uh, above. So let's do that. And we see it pulls 1.38 roughly, right? Uh, now, let's try the opposite side and let's see how much it pulls. 1.23, 1.22. So it pulls less um, trying to pull the 
OTA, the telescope, up than it does the counterweights. It means that I am heavy on the counterweight side of things, right? So I would need to maybe, uh, we can go like completely crazy and go all the way up and try to see, okay, so now how much energy will it require to pull those counterweights up? So let's, uh, let's try this again. Again, it's not the ideal position for that cable, but whatever, it's, uh, I hope it's gonna work. And let's go up. And we see 1.23 on one side. And now on the, uh, when I try to pull up the telescope, 1.28. So we are closer to best balance, but we're not quite there yet, right? We don't see the same power consumption on both uh, sides. So uh, I will lower it a little bit. And the delta was a bit, you know, uh, the delta of the actual amps being pulled was much smaller. So we were much closer to balance uh, this time around. So let's do one more round where I will uh, pull up the, um, uh, the counterweights. And it uses 1.23. Okay, let's pull up the telescope now. And it uses 1.22, 1.23. I think we are now, have, we have balanced the telescope properly. And we're, we've just used this little tool, which, you know, I can only describe as magic. <laughs> um, and let's double check. Yeah, yeah, we're in, we're, in, we're in balance. And when you're in balance like that, when, when you're very close to balance, it becomes very difficult to estimate where you should be putting the weight. Uh, but with that, really, you can do that very, very uh, precisely. And we can do the same thing for the declination axis. Okay, so now we've done the RA axis very successfully. I'm really happy with this method. We can double check the declination axis. Now for the declination axis, I'm pretty sure that I'm already well uh, balanced because uh, what I did is I took the telescope off, basically. I put it on the, I, um, I put it down the dovetail down on the edge of a table and then I pushed the telescope until it started like tipping over and then you just look at where it started tipping over and you put that to the middle of the dovetail bar. So if you do that you don't have to double check your declination uh, balance although uh, this is with the requirement that all of the equipment that you add on top of the telescope is within the axis is like parallel to the RA axis as much as possible. So you see my camera, filter wheel, etc. as much as possible there under um, the telescope and along the RA axis like that. The computer is the same, the guider is the same. I try to have as few asymmetrical stuff as possible. Otherwise, the declination axis is impossible to balance properly unless you have a, a counterweight that's be, that would basically need to be jutting out at a 90 degree angle like that to counter any weight that I had on the side, for example. So it's quite important as much as possible to try to keep uh, the weight along one single axis that declination balance is possible. So now let's have a look. I'll put the, uh, the telescope back to, uh, to the uh, horizontal like that in, um, in RA. And then I'll put the declination almost at horizontal. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch the power consumption as the telescope basically goes above horizontal. Like right now, the, the butt of the telescope is kind of like uh, downward, it's slanted downwards. And as the telescope, um, as, as the motors will be pulling up, uh, the butt of the telescope will uh, watch the power consumption and then we'll do the same for the front of the telescope. So right now we are at, uh, okay, we'll, Pull the, pull the butt up. We had the horizontal almost 1.90, 1.88. So as it crosses the horizontal, it went from like 1.90, 1.88. So it seems to be uh, the current value. Now let's see what happens to the front of the telescope as it does uh, the same thing. So it's almost at horizontal. It's at horizontal going up. So 1.94 actually. So it seems to be very slightly front heavy. So I could go in and try to, um, to basically achieve uh, the balance. 
And originally I was going to say that I would not do the adjustment and I put the camera away and all that kind of stuff and then I decided to actually do the, ad the adjustment. And while doing the adjustment for the declination axis, I found that actually instead of using nine, nine times speed, nine times the, the seven, uh, the nine speed here, seven speed has less like motor acceleration uh, going on. And so the readings seem to be a bit more precise and they're even bigger. It seems it's difficult to maintain, it's more, difficult it requires more power more amp draw, draw to actually maintain um, the, uh, the uh, lower speed than it does a higher speed which I I guess makes sense in terms of momentum and so we can try to measure again uh, on the declination axis now that it is at seven uh, speed and we can see that on the butt side that as it crosses the horizontal we have 2.30 and in the front side, we have 2.3233. So it's working perfectly. It's actually much more precise than with the nine times speed, uh, which is, you know, great news because that's something uh, we can use as is. And by the way, the same for RA. So if I uh, measure RA as it is slewing in one direction, so let me put it a bit uh, more slanted down. I'm gonna pull the telescope up first. So let's pull the telescope up. We can see it pulls like 2.20. And now I'm gonna pull the counterweights up. And it pulls 2.22. So actually the counterweights are slightly <laughs> heavier. And I can do even more like adjustment, like adjust it a little tiny bit this direction. <laughs> And does it, does it change anything? I feel it's, it's getting futile by this point, but this is so much fun, actually. <laughs> I'm having fun, like, playing with this little instrument that I had no idea even existed. Uh, so let's pull the telescope up one direction. Uh, we get uh, 2.1920. Uh, and now uh, I, I need to go a bit more up. Okay. And now let's go in the other direction. And we get 2.19. 20 <laughs> so we are actually exactly uh, well balanced so now that little tiny adjustment i did means that i am perfectly in balance i would never be able to do this kind of tiny adjustment just with the mount so this is i don't know to me it's, it's a lot of fun i don't know why this is so much fun but it is i am so sorry i am a huge geek slash nerd oh man this thing is magic it is pure magic i love it so there you have it. <laughs> um, so nine times speed, uh, the, nine, the ninth rate uh, was decent enough, but the seventh rate is actually much better for this measurement. And it's, it's working so well. I'm really loving it. So um, I can try to, uh, to double check. Uh, where's my declination? Ah, no, RA actually. Look, it's here. I keep forgetting. <laughs> yeah. It feels, it feels extremely well balanced. Oh man, oh this is so cool. And declination? <laughs> yes. Oh my word, this is so awesome. Yeah, okay, so I don't think my telescope has ever been that well balanced. So, this is pretty cool. I'm really liking it. So um, yeah, thanks so much Mehdi for suggesting this method. It's a lot of fun. Just trying it out was worth it. And you know, it's something that never came to mind because I didn't even know these things existed. Um, and so if you're like me, <laughs> feel free to go and try it out. If you do buy this thing, uh, make sure to buy one that supports AC, uh, 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 not just AC, but DC. The ones with just AC alternative current sensor are cheaper. Make sure that it supports um, direct current. Um, it's because the, the gauge, the, the sensor that is needed is actually more expensive for direct current apparently. So make sure uh, to do that. And mine is a Kaiweet HT206D. It seems to be working fine and it cost me around 30 bucks. So there you have it. A new fun method uh, that I had 
you know, I had heard of it like for ioptron mounts using like the, the the controller messages that kind of stuff. But I never, I always thought that if you wanted to do it with an external meter, you needed to like cut cables and stuff like that. But it's not the case. I just separated those two cables with a cutter while uh, you know they were unplugged, of course, and that's all I did, and it's working like awesome. And so um, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this was useful to you. I, I hope it's just as fun for you as this for me because I can't believe what I'm seeing this is so cool and you know if you are not subscribed to this channel if you're if you if it's your first visit here first welcome thanks for watching and uh, if you like this kind of video with tips and tricks about astrophotography astronomy I do mostly uh, deep sky imaging and also sometimes planetary solar H alpha uh, astrophotography normal astronomy I have tons of tips and tricks about mounts about cameras about optimal exposure time about capturing software Software, about processing software, all that kind of stuff. I try to have, I have a, I try to have a holistic version uh, vision of the whole hobby. If that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing down below and clicking on the notification bell to be not, to be notified when one of my new videos come out, comes out. And otherwise, you know, uh, please, if you like this video, leave a like down below. If you know better ways of doing balance uh, management without buying a premium mount that will just like have you know perfectly. Um, you know, smooth access when it's unlocked. Uh, please let me do, know down in the comments. So if you have video ideas, that kind of stuff, always welcome down in the comments. And so thank you so much for watching. As always, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.